now going to shift gears a little bit from history to now and to the future. I'm going to introduce you to a couple of gentlemen who have spent their life in the Forest Service building digital knowledge, looking back in time, looking at now, and also aspiring. Well, okay, Hobie, Chris, take it away. You do it. Thanks, Jack. Chris and I work for our nation's forest inventory program. And I want to thank Andrea for her insightful remarks on Humboldt and his legacy, collecting data, uncovering patterns, sharing science. My first job out of graduate school was teaching at Humboldt State University, 12 hours north of here on the Redwood Coast. <laughs> My colleagues there helped me grow from making simple maps to using GIS to convey information and tell compelling stories. We are so excited to be speaking to the world's largest gathering of GIS professionals about the efforts we are making, collecting authoritative data and sharing it with you. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Because for our agency, it all begins with how we see the forest. Do you see trees, leaves, rocks, soil, sky? Or do you see lumber? Do you see life, death, change? Is your experience spiritual or utilitarian? This is our home. We are tied to it. We depend upon it. We all see something different and we are charged with taking the pulse of our nation's forests to create knowledge that can be widely shared and integrated with other fields of study, to inspire innovation and action. Let us show you how we see the forest. The Forest Service has a proud history of conservation and management, and there are serious challenges confronting us, globalization, climate change, population growth, and the search for solutions creates a hunger for data and information. We've been mandated by Congress for more than 80 years and invested more than a billion dollars since 1990 to provide authoritative data across three themes. A field plot network monitoring the conservation and management of the nation's forest resources. A census of the economic dynamics of the forest products industry and a survey of the objectives and motivations of the nation's forest landowners. This massive campaign collects data on over 355,000 plots on public and private lands, from rural to urban forests, across nine time zones from Guam to the Caribbean territories. And the result is a database with more than 19 million trees. Now, we collect and share a lot of diverse information, but it all begins with a sample. In this case of land and trees, measured by crews who have made a career out of field work. As our measurements are turned into information, we begin to understand. We've learned that forest management activities are strongly influenced by patterns of ownership, public and private. And looking at the complexities in Northern California and Southern Oregon, it highlights the challenges we face, like the conservation of endangered species, forest restoration, and fire management. Our partners in forest health are monitoring the expansion of native and exotic pests. And using this tool, you can see how native pests are the primary threat in the West, and exotic pests are increasingly common in eastern forests. We produce national scale data and analyses. Here, we're sharing the current distribution of forest types across the United States. But for our program to remain relevant into the future, we are reinventing the way that we deliver our data. You see, beyond discovering connections, we have an opportunity, an obligation to reach out, to share our rich scientific information as widely as possible. Part of the agency's mission includes educating the public to help them participate effectively in our planning process. So we've been studying how others tell stories in the digital environment. Now we're combining data, information, and knowledge 
with artistic visualizations and we're reaching a much broader spectrum of users than ever before. Our first web application was the Forest Atlas, facilitating your exploration of conservation issues. Let's take a look at some of its content. This Atlas application allows you to examine individual tree species ranges. We've taken complex information and woven it into a dynamic legend, highlighting the relationship between the number of trees and the volume of wood they produce. The outside ring places species in the ecological landscapes where trees grow. Selecting a species updates the inset map. Clicking on an individual species, we can see that sugar maple is widespread in the eastern United States, and zooming in highlights local distribution patterns. We've included additional content, like photos and descriptions of, descriptions of common uses to enrich STEM educational opportunities. We are inspiring children to understand the next generation of forests. This application uses an interactive dendrogram to visualize where forest communities exist. You can ask questions and interactively explore the spatial distributions of broad categories like softwoods and hardwoods, as well as the major forest types within them. These communities are all mapped by linking our field plot data with spectral responses observed by satellites. Now, though wildfire is a natural process, climate change and unnatural accumulations of fuel create catastrophic fires. As you flew into San Diego, you may have seen active wildfires here in the western United States. This map highlights the southeast has its own struggles with fire. These legends are dynamic cross-tab functions and communicate with the map. So selecting the early years in the record subsets the data to the same interval. And you may notice fires becoming more common in recent years. This is the exact same content we're publishing in our print atlas, but you can see how a digital application, it brings it all to life. We're registering Forest Atlas content in ArcGIS Online and the Living Atlas. So it's discoverable by professionals like yourselves who have a requirement for authoritative data. The ability to take full advantage of the mountains of data that we collect is enhanced by insights and capabilities outside of our agency. The increasing global use of forest resources requires constant monitoring to ensure future sustainability. The benefit of monitoring increases when those data are freely accessible. For example, our content is being used by the Texas A&M Forest Service. They developed a web application that helps create customized timber supply analyses. This interactive tool is helping grow local economies and safeguarding forest resources for future generations. Very quickly, we can observe and better understand the forest resources of an area that might represent a planned mill location. The app generates a detailed report on the forest resources within a given search radius. It provides a rich set of metrics that can aid resource managers and decision makers alike. The report and map are spatially explicit and temporally rich. Texas A&M Forest Service is a great example of our partners using the raw FI data in interesting ways to support local needs. Now, as you can see, in the southern U.S., our forest resources are intimately tied to a forest products economy that produces $200 billion in products every year. In this web scene, we are tr tracking those facilities that manufacture these process, uh, products for use around the world. Looking back, there were significantly more mills in 2005 prior to the most recent economic downturn. This loss of over 700 mills had a significant impact on employment, the economy, and the production of wood products in the South. And these mills don't exist in a vacuum. Raw materials from across the country are required to supply them. Monitoring wood flows is important in understanding our connected economy, potential travel corridors for pests, and overall resource sustainability. Wood moves further than you might expect. With the Forest Atlas, we can now visualize the complex dynamics of the wood products industry. Here, we provide quick and focused answers to where wood movement is taking place, and we quantify that movement with our data. 
The Forest Service is even looking to the future today. Our climate is changing. Studies of geographic shifts in suitable habitat for many tree species are now easily accessible. This research suggests significant changes will occur to many iconic tree species across the country, including sugar maple. This will result in the forest of the future being quite different than those we know today. To confront the challenge posed by our changing climate, we produce and report the official forest carbon estimates of her submission to the United Nations. And this map highlights the largest distribution of forest pools across the country. In green areas, it's live trees. In gray areas, it's soils. And in orange areas, it's dead material. Humboldt had to spend years trekking across the globe collecting data before he could even begin to see patterns. Now we are continuously collecting and sharing a staggering amount of authoritative content. We've built an atlas that will continue to grow alongside with an engaging portfolio of apps to implement creative and interactive uses of the data. We've shared it with our partners, and they're building apps to facilitate their needs. And we're sharing our data with its ultimate owners, you. We are eager to see your applications. Thank you.